Hi, my name is Richard Lematia. I am an irrigation engineer by profession. Uh, currently here, I'm at Lems Farm. Uh, at Lems Farm, we have a number of activities that we do undertake. One, we raise vegetable seedlings, high quality vegetable seedlings for farmers. And then we also produce vegetables for consumption for the local market. And then uh, we also do train farmers and youth on uh, the best agronomic practices and also demonstrate different uh, technologies that can be applied in the agricultural production. We do it with a lot of uh, commitment and uh, we're here to empower the youth and the farmers on how to produce more per square meter of their plot. So we're trying to bring the concept of using uh, a little space but to produce more. So here is our greenhouse, which is for raising seedlings, vegetable seedlings, basically. So we shall go inside there and see whatever seedlings that we have inside there. Please come with me. So here we first disinfect so that we don't uh, uh, bring pests or diseases to our seedlings. So you, uh, this is our uh, greenhouse for raising the vegetable seedlings. Currently here we have uh, tomatoes. These are uh, Novel F1. Uh, these, these seedlings here, they are actually booked by one of the farmers already. So we are raising more seedlings uh, for tomatoes, uh, green pepper, cabbages, spinach, kumawiki, nakati. So all vegetables. So some of them we raise them on order. So if you need seedlings, you, you make an order and then we can be able to raise here. So we use these seedling trays that you see here. Uh, we don't use ordinary soil for planting. We use a medium. This is the medium we use, it is cocoa peat, to fill in the trays and then we, we plant our, seedli our seeds. And then uh, what you see here, uh, is our humidity chamber. So after planting the seeds in the trays, we put them uh, here so that uh, they're able to provide the necessary conditions for germination. Then after they have germinated, then we put them on the display. So here you see there is uh, this net. Uh, this net was basically to reduce the heat. So when we reach the point of hardening the seedlings, then we're able to remove this net so that we're able to harden the seedlings. So inside here, these are seedlings which are ready for transplanting. So these ones are actually already booked. Most of them were taken. This is just the balance. So here you see you have a seedling uh, that you're able to plant and uh, you cannot uh, uh, lose the seedling in the field because the roots are not damaged, the roots are intact and uh, it's fully hardened. So with this system you're able to have uniformity of the seedlings and then in the field you're also able to perform uniformly. Most times people raise seedlings the traditional way in the soil but uh, the management of the seeds, seedlings in the soil uh, is not that uh, good because you're able to lose, you can be able to lose so many seedlings in that process. So with this you're able to achieve uniformity and you're able to get high quality uh, seedlings so that uh, can be able to actually give healthy plants in the field once you plant them in the field. So basically here is the, 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 the foundation for the production which is the raising of the seedlings. Here now in the field, this is where we do plant our, uh, our vegetables. So in order to have good production, we have an irrigation system that we have installed and our water source is right down there. These are 
tomatoes that we have planted. And then uh, we also have cabbages here. These are ridges that we have uh, constructed for, for planting. We do not plant flat because uh, these ridges actually help to, 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 to make sure that in case it rains heavily, you're able to have uh, the excess water that accumulates in between. And then it is also easier to move in between the, in the field for easy management. So these are the drip lines that we uh, use for irrigation. We have the drip irrigation system here. We have, uh, these are control valves to control the, the irrigation system here. With this system, we're able to produce throughout the year. Here is our water source, which is a shallow well. It is a, this is a hand dug well. It's uh, seven meters deep. And uh, we're able to pump water from here to that tank up there. And then we, we distribute through the pipe network and the drip lines in the field. So from here, we use the pump. And then uh, once the water reaches up there, we now distribute this water to this field and to all those other gardens, the tower gardens, the multi-story gardens, and then some we use in the nursery, uh, nursery greenhouse. With this, we can actually be able to produce very healthy plants. And then uh, these ridges, they are 1.2 meters wide. And on this, we can be able to plant uh, many seedlings. Currently, we have, we have cleared this place for the new planting, which is going to be in November, which according to the, the, the seasons here, it is not actually planting season because we are now setting into dry season. But since we have the irrigation system, we, we can plant any time. So we are planting in November so that we have uh, ready vegetables in the dry season so that uh, people can be able to come and pick uh, vegetables here in the dry season. And then what you see here, this is our fatigation uh, unit. Uh, this fatigation unit is to apply fertilizer for the crops. So with this, this system, you're able to uh, efficiently apply fertilizer to the crops. So. Yeah, we put a small tank here, then uh, this one is dipped in the tank, which is mixed with the fertilizer. Then it is able to suck the fertilizer and mix it with the water before it is applied in the field. So as you can see here, we have our potted plants. This is green pepper. So we're just trying to make use of this space because uh, we cannot, this, this is just cement cover, which, which uh, so many on the construction sites, so we're just trying to make use of them. Here we have set up a nursery, nursery bed for onions. This was uh, an order by one of the farmers. So we are raising onion seedlings for, for that farmer. Then uh, this side here, uh, here we have our multi-story gardens. Uh, this is where we, we are trying to make use of the vertical space. So with this, you're able to plant uh, up to 100 plants in just a, 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 an area of one square meter. The material we use here is just the damp proof course, uh, this DPC, uh, which is readily available in the hardwares. So here we have uh, Swiss chard, people call it uh, here spinach. Then uh, this side we have uh, strawberries, strawberries. And then uh, there we have kales, commonly called as the sukuma wiki. So basically, these, these gardens help us a lot to maximize uh, production in this space. And then here we have uh, nakati. There are quite a number of things that we can plant here. We're able to harvest more from a very little space. Here we have uh, some tomatoes that we have planted in this small space. So from here, we can still be able to harvest enough. So these are hybrid tomatoes. So we're able to get more fruits from each plant. That is maximizing the production in this space. So the other side, we have uh, our tower gardens. Here, we still make use of the vertical space. 
So initially, we only planted uh, eggplants, but uh, I, I realized there was still a lot of space up, which I could use. So that's why I constructed these tower gardens. So with this, we were able to plant a number of, uh, of, of crops. Up there, we have, we have planted uh, spinach. These other lines, we are going to plant green pepper, the seedlings which we have put in the nursery bed. So these ones are waiting the seedlings. So basically, we are trying to maximize this space. And it being in an urban setting, most people in the urban setting uh, do not have big chunks of land. And uh, most people also think that you need to, for you to do farming, you need a very big piece of land. But uh, with this concept, you're able to produce more in a very small space. Most, most times youth come and they learn from here. Other farmers come, they appreciate the concept and they, and they also pick one or two of the ideas that they have gotten from here. And I guide them on how to also do the same in their, in their gardens. They also come and, those who come and buy the seedlings, we guide them on how to manage the seedlings uh, from planting until harvest time. So with that, they are actually changing the mindset that you need a big piece of land to do farming. And also, they are getting to appreciate the, the concept of irrigation, which now is the way to go, because we can no longer rely, rely on rain. Rain uh, most times disappoints. So at the, at the time when you expect rain, that is when it may not be there for some time. So what you do in such a case, that's when you can be able to switch now to the irrigation system to supplement. We also have a plan to set up uh, poultry, which will actually give us the manure. Because our source of manure here is, uh, we look for manure around, uh, those from poultry farm, those from uh, kraals. So at times we do not get some. So we want to also make our own manure from here. This is just a quarter an acre, but we want to do a lot in this space. So for us to achieve that, we also need support uh, from those who can support us in terms of resources, in terms of ideas. We are open to farmers, we are open to youth, to train them. We are open to share the knowledge that we have with them and also learn from them. So we'll always be grateful uh, whenever people come and learn from here we share with them, others guide them, others give us new ideas on uh, what to do, how to do it. So we are very grateful that uh, we are getting to have an impact in the community. We look forward to having more and more people on board so that we can be able to have an impact in the agricultural sector in Uganda. Yeah, the market is there because most of the neighbors here they stay in rentals so every evening they go and buy vegetables from the market so now they come and buy uh, vegetables from here i don't even need to take my vegetables to the market because the market is within and it's not even enough to supply the market around first of all the water source that we have is a shallow well so the capacity in the dry season is not enough to meet the demand for the crops here. And as we keep on expanding, we, we, we actually need more amount of water so that, be, that can be able to supply the whole area. Because we intend to also bring in other uh, projects like poultry in this place, which also will need water. The plan we have for this farm is to make it a model farm for the region so that people can come and learn different technologies and also we also want to expand it because this place is just a quarter an acre so we would love to get a bigger plot and then uh, expand so that we can have a number of uh, uh, projects that we can be able to run in that place the first thing is to to have the passion you have the passion and then uh, you believe in yourself and then you need to learn from other farmers, you need to learn from people who have done it so that you're able to apply the knowledge and then uh, with your commitment, you can be able to get something. 
doesn't matter how small you start. You don't need to start big. So you start more small and then uh, in the process you get to learn and then you can be able to imp uh, make improvements and at the end you will be able to make it big. You can reach me on my mobile line which is uh, 0784 416502. Then you can also uh, email me uh, on lemsrich at gmail.com.